some of them who do not you know how to swim, they put there, they put a lot of energy, right? So as they put a lot of energy, uh, thinking that now they will not be able to drown inside the, the water, it, it, they realize uh, uh, they found themselves drowning. Why? Because they don't know. They don't know that the principle. That I need only to throw my body in the water, then it is the water to do it, to carry me without applying a lot of a lot of energy. So there are people who are trained in something, and there are people who are not trained in that very thing. Or people who have a skill and the people who do not have a skill. People who do not have a skill in anything that they do, they will not be able to do that thing accordingly, the way it is supposed to be to be done. And a person who has a skill, a person who has been trained, a professional in that thing, will be able to do this thing perfectly in the manner that it's supposed to be done. And this person is also able to achieve what? The result. The results. Right? Uh, what about spiritual life? Do we have to be skilled in spiritual life? We don't need any skill here. About, we don't need to be trained in spiritual life. Yeah. To be trained is to be it's like to be having what? A skill. You are trained to have a skill, right? Mm. Then you apply that skill. Yeah? You apply that principle that you have been given. Then it becomes easy. Yeah? Then, even in the spiritual life, we need to be trained. We need to be taught. We need to be given the principle somehow to live the spiritual, the spiritual life. Then if at all we apply that, that way, then spiritual life becomes easy. Right? The spiritual life becomes easy. Is it difficult to receive salvation? No. Yeah, pastor. Okay, Pastor. Pastor Paul and Aji, excuse. So it's okay? Yes. Is it difficult to receive salvation? Let us think about it. Is it difficult to receive salvation? No. To some, they say it is very, very difficult to become holy, to become perfect, to become righteous. There are people who know it is difficult. For you, you know it is easy. For you and me, we know it is easy. But at one point before, we also thought it is difficult. Unless you never tried to, to, be, to, be, to receive salvation or you never tried to be righteous before. Until when you met with the good news mission, this is when this came to your attention. Is it like that? Mm. Derek, had you tried before? Before you came to GNM? Everything else. Yeah? Everything was normal. Yes, so because. <laughs> but before you came to GNM, you used to go to church. Yeah. Looking for what? In the church. Other people, they are going to church. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it may be also you see others coming to JNM and again you come. <laughs> Is that possibility also? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it might be also you see people, you see Pastor Prince in the GNMs and you also want to be in JNM. Yeah. Oh, that's why you. Good news mission. You want to go to heaven? Could you? No. no. And that time, could you say it is easy to go to heaven? No. no. Before my case, uh, I was born of uh, Catholic parents, and I went to Catholic up to my form one. And uh, my form one. Okay, my dad and my mom, they got officially married uh, while I was in class eight. That is doing wedding, eh? They were married before, like they had not done a wedding. So they did a wedding when I was in class eight. I think in Uganda, you have up, up to class seven. Kenya, we have up to class eight, but it is now we are switching to a primary level up to class seven. We will not be having class eight as of from... 
2024, 2023. 2024, next year we will not be having 2020. Yeah. <laughs> we are doing away with the 844 system. So, um, my dad did the wedding in the month of September. He bought a land, he started construction. Then that year I was in class eight expecting to do my exam, right? So when I was doing my exam, dad became sick. And that sickness killed him actually, he died. Immediately I finished with my exam, my dad died. But that time he was so close now to the, to the church, that is Catholic church. So uh, going to secondary school, I had no one in my family who can take me to secondary school because the reason why my dad came to buy land, uh, my dad had two wives. My mother, she's there. Uh, she's the one who came first then. In the, there's another one. But this other one died. And in her death, it brought a commotion in our family. It was say, who has killed her? And the, the brothers to this other one, they came and fought everyone in, the, in our home. So we had to escape. And my dad, is, he, he will never go back to their home. And that is how it happened now. He was thinking of buying a land. So you see, there is no relationship between us and the relatives of my, my dad. Now he has died. Who can come from the, my father's family to come and help me? No one, because there is no good relationship, right? And uh, on the side of my mother, it is not that they are rich, that they can help support my education. So, and in that time when my dad died, uh, he had spent money to buy land, he had spent money to do wedding, he had spent money to do cons to start construction, and he has now spent money in sector. So he died leaving us with nothing. How can I go to school? So the church came to my rescue. So I was I schooled in Form One by the help of the, the church, Catholic Church. Right? Catholic Church. But uh, while I was in Form 1, I met with somebody who was preaching. And he was preaching against the Catholic. And out of his explanation, I was, con I was convinced he's making some sense. And this made me to quit Catholic. And quitting Catholic, that means I also lose what? <laughs> the help that I was receiving. And it happened like that until today. I never went back to Catholic. They stopped and paying for my studies, right? And after that, uh, in that year when I was quitting Catholic, I was I was in Form One. There is one fear that came to my heart. This person convinced me in this way. He was preaching about the end time, end time prophecies, and read in the Book of Matthew, chapter is it chapter twenty four, chapter four, where Jesus is speaking about the things which will come to pass before his second come. come. Matthew chapter 24, right? Mm -hmm. And that was in 2003, actually. 2003. Where were you, by then? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Two or three, right? Mm -hmm. Then, uh, in that Matthew, uh, when Jesus was explaining, Jesus was saying, you will hear a nation fighting against nation. There will be famines, there will be earthquakes. 2003, there was a fight between uh, Iran. Was it Iran? Saddam Hussein is from? Saddam Hussein, Saddam Hussein yeah. Iraq, yes. Yeah. Iraq and US, 2003. Is when Saddam Hussein was eh, hanged by the US, isn't it? Then, this alone made me to be convinced, ah, what is written in the Bible is true. Because these things were written long ago and they are coming to do what? To pass. So whatever thing this person was explaining from the Bible, I took it to be true. Then he went to read it from the book of Revelation about the number 666, Mark of the Beast. And he as he was explaining, he said, this Mark of the Beast, the people who will bring it, they are who? The Catholics. And I'm already convinced whatever is written in the Bible is, is true. This is what took me out of Catholic. Now, how will I live my life without receiving 
this uh, mark of the beast number 666. So I quit Catholic. For three years, I never went to any church. That is uh, when I was in my form two, form three, form four, I never went to any church. After that, my mother, she still goes to Catholic. So I was not staying with her for these three years. After the three years, after my studies in high school, because I came to uh, meet with another person who was able to help me pay my school fees. Then I went back where my mom was staying and she was pushing me, you must go back where? You must go to church for you to stay with me. But I refused. Then she decided, okay, then join any other church, provided that you are going to church. That is how I started going to Protestant churches. I went to one Protestant church. Then I stayed there just five months. I say, I don't have peace here. I, they are not showing me the way. For the for the past three years, I haven't gone to church. But the fear that is still inside me, or the worry I have, I should not receive the mark of the, the beast. But in this church where I've gone in the Protestants, they are not able to give me an answer. I quit. I moved to another one. I moved up to four churches before I came to meet with the good news. Me? Before I came to meet with good news. Me. So I met with good news in 2008. So after meeting with the good news mission in 2008, and for the first time I heard them speaking the things which I have not heard from the other churches that I've gone previously, then what was my conclusion? In the Bible it is written, in the last days there will be what? False preachers. And these are the ones now. How dare they can they say there is no sin? Yet all other churches have gone. They know there is what? They sin. So 2008, good news made me to uh, make this a, a decision. I will not ever go to any church. I better become what? Again. And I started to live like that. But God was after me. I, I believe so. <laughs> because in the book of Exodus chapter 15 verses 13, I think so. Uh, it says what? Exodus 15, 13, it says, you can read, Pastor. Mm. Mm. So, Thou in thy mercy hast laid forth the people which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in thy, in thy strength unto the holy habitation. Mm. Thou in thy mercy hast laid forth the people which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in thy strength into thy holy habitation. So when I read this scripture, I can see clearly. Uh, and that's why I can say, God was guiding my life. My life. Because after rejecting, uh, after making a decision that I will not go to any church, I don't want anything to do with the church in the year 2008, God brought a tragedy. Because I had already started living my life. I have my house. I have rented my house. Now I live with hustling. And it happened, my elder brother, in his workplace, uh, the thieves uh, broke in his workplace, then they stole. And my brother was, was also taken as one of the suspects and was put into prison for some time. Then no one could help his wife and the children. And where he was staying, the wife and the children were chased out. I had to accommodate them. I stayed with them like two, three weeks. Then one evening, my house was burnt down with my brother's son inside and everything of mine. Then the family was against me that I'm the one who has done what? Who has done it. Then I saw no one wants me on this earth. I started thinking, who is, who is the problem? Then <laughs> as I was thinking, I, I the pro, all the problem, I put, I put the blame to my parents. We are 10 in our family. When my dad died, 
Uh, our last born was still in the womb. My mom was the expectant. So we are 10. But until then, none of us has been schooled enough to get a good job to be able to support ah, us. Then I blamed my parents. Why did you give birth to many, many children? I never gave them a good word, found it? foundation to be able to support others. And why now blame that I'm the cause of the problem in this family? That time I wished death to my mom also. And actually I worked for my mom to die. I was thankful already my dad was, was dead. But all this was the, how God was, uh, God was uh, guiding me to his holy habitat. Habitation. So while I was in the process now making sure that my mom also dies, I, 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 I found myself in another church, a religious church, deliverance church. I stayed in deliverance for like uh, five months. Again, I found myself uncomfortable. I quit. I just stayed without going anywhere, without going to any church. But still inside my heart is a fear of receiving what? The mark of the bee? The mark of the beast. That fear was there in me. So, until I came to, two, uh, you see in my story, coming to 2008, I had already decided I don't want anything to do with what? With the church. I've given up with the church. It is difficult. And the life, to live a, a life of, uh, uh, to live a, a, that I am saved, I am born again, I think, I think I need to grow old. If when I become old, then my desires would have come down. Yeah? I will not be able to live contrary to God in most cases because I will be old and my desires have reduced. Have reduced. So I had given up. It's okay. You see, I had given up. I had given up. At that moment, I could say what? Things to do with God at my youth is difficult. Yeah? It is difficult. But, even though I came to a position to say it is difficult, it is difficult, have I grown old now? That now I am I'm following the things of God. Now I have, I, I have followed the things of God now for like how many? Since 20, I now receive salvation in the year 2009. Until today, how many years? Almost 14 years. Am I old? No. I reach a point it is difficult. This thing is difficult. I was say, speaking like this to, to, to explain. To others they say, receiving salvation is difficult. But for me and you, we have already known receiving salvation is not difficult. Living a spiritual life is, to some it is difficult. But to them who have uh, trained, to them who have uh, gotten the skill about the spiritual life, then they will say spiritual life is not difficult. Right? So I came to give up. This thing is difficult. This thing is bad. And I think until I grow old is when now I can come back to this thing. Why? The people whom I was meeting from my childhood until then, I can say they were not learning about this. And then they could not teach me about it, right? Mm -hmm. Then I came to meet now with the people who could teach me about uh, receiving salvation and also living the life to believe in God, to believe in God. 2009, I, after meeting the church the second time, then they taught me fairly from, uh, I got the clarity from the scriptures on how I can receive salvation and to be called a person who is righteous, a person who is perfect, a person who is holy forever, right? Mm -hmm. And I was convinced through the teachings that I was being given. Until today, I live saying what? I am just, I am righteous, I am holy, I am perfect. But this language to others, is it easy? It is very difficult. Right? It is very difficult. Then, I was taught about salvation, receiving salvation which I came to understand, it is so easy. What I need is to believe, is to accept that which I'm being done what? I'm being taught, right? Then I receive salvation, just as simple like that. 
What about now living a spiritual life again? What about living a spiritual life? Everyone, if I would not have believed them who are teaching me about salvation, right? They were teaching me the word, right? If I would not have believed them until today, would I have been speaking that I am a just person? Would I be speaking that I am a righteous person? They spoke, and my my take was to believe. Trust what they, they say. And as I trusted, as I believe, then I can testify I am just, I am righteous, I am perfect. <laughs> there is no difference in us living a spiritual life. There is no difference. People who are trained in swimming, they don't struggle. People who are untrained, when they get into water, they struggle. And even they end up being done what? Drowned. But if people are trained, the experts, right? They don't struggle inside water. They can even stay uh, covered by water for some minutes. But untrained one, how many minutes can he put his or her head in, in the water? Yeah? Seconds, then the head is out, right? But the trained person, he knows it precisely. Even in our spiritual life, the same. Salvation we could not receive without being done, but without being taught. Is it? Is that the case? Yes. If you read the, the book of Romans, how we came to receive salvation that is in Romans chapter chapter 10 from verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be saved? <laughs> Senor Derek, how, how do we receive salvation? Can you give a, that arrangement? What is the process? Mm. Did you open Romans chapter 10? Chapter 10. Yeah. Mm. Did you read verses from verses 13 to verses 15? 13, 14, 15. 13, 14, 15. You can read. Whosoever shall call the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mm -hmm. Then how shall they call on whom they have not believed? Mm -hmm. And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? Mm -hmm. How shall they hear without a preacher? Mm -hmm. And how shall they preach except they be saved? Up to there. So what is the procedure? For one to be saved, he has to call the name of the, yeah. the Lord. For one to call the name of the Lord, he must have heard of, eh, believed that name, right? Mm -hmm. For one to believe, he must have heard about it. You cannot believe that which you have not uh, heard. And for you to hear, there must be someone who speaks. In other words, who preaches to you. Mm -hmm. And for that person to preach, he does not, he is not to preach his own message. He must be sent. Mm -hmm. So it all begins by what? God sent his son. They call him Jesus. He came to die. Now who is he speaking? He came to die. Is it Jesus himself? Somebody is reporting. He came to die. And your song in God sent his son. They call him Jesus. He came to die. To die for me. He. So is it Jesus himself singing? No, somebody is reporting. God sent his son. Send here. They call him Jesus. He came to die for you. That's a report given by somebody. Then you hear this message. Through this message, you believe this message. Then after believe, as you believe this message, you can say, Jesus is my Lord. My Lord. And in that case, you have been done what? You have been saved. We couldn't be saved without hearing about this thing. Right? 
So uh, everything, uh, sending, preaching, it was not our, our work. This is the work of somebody else. Ours was only to do what? To believe. Then so easily, so easily, we say what? I am justified. I am righteous. Right? Yes. When we met with the person who was sent. Mm. Spiritual life is also easy. Right? Yes. If we are trained, if we are told, and the most important thing now, when we are told, when we are trained, as we were trained and told about the salvation, and ours was to believe, to trust that which you are told, then salvation was easy. Right? Faith comes by? Yeah. The just shall live by? By faith. Then can you just live by faith by reading the Bible? Where there is a hearing, there must be? Uh, uh, the just shall live by? Faith. And faith comes by? Hearing. How can you hear without a speaker? Can we have faith by reading the Bible? Yeah. The Bible does not say you will have faith by reading. The Bible says the faith comes by hearing. And hearing the word of God. So we have our teachers. As we had a teacher who taught us the word of God in, in regards to salvation. Again, we have our teachers who are teaching us the word of God in relation to us now living the spiritual life. But what is the most important thing as they are teaching us this word? If we do not have the trust... In 2008, I lacked trust with the Good News Mission because they were, I had something which I have never had with any other church. In 2009, I came to have now the trust with what they were speaking to, to me after I was done what? Convinced. Convinced. But, I was late. If I had to die in between 2008 and 2009, I'd be, I, I would have gone where? To hell. I was even to believe before, Sandio. I was to believe before. So when we think of our, our now, our spiritual life now, we are, there is the church, there is the church, and they are the servants of God who are guiding us now using the word of God. Sandio. As much as they are speaking to us the word of God, as they spoke to us the word of God in relation to our salvation, that time when they spoke to us the word of God in relation to our salvation and we lacked the trust with them, then we wouldn't have received what? Salvation. Until today, receiving salvation, we could still speak salvation. Receiving salvation is difficult. Living spiritual life, same. They are guiding us with the word of God. Right? then if I do not have trust with them who are guiding me using that word of God, it becomes difficult for me to acknowledge that which they are guiding me to. Then, will I live the spiritual life in the way that you're supposed to? No. Then, will I be able to speak that the spiritual life is easy? No. I look under the life of Pastor Johan. For him, he, he speaks just spiritual life is copy-pasting. He copies from whom? He copies from Pastor Park. Whatever Pastor Park tells him, he does. There's one testimony of Pastor Johan when he was having a backbone problem. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, he went to hospitals. He bought Kakuri. I, 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 you must have heard of that testimony. Mm -hmm. He bought Kakuri. He used that Kakuri, but still the pain was not going. Then he called Pastor Park with expectation. Pastor Park will tell him what? Come to Korea to receive what? Operation. But instead, Pastor Park told him what? Buy Kakuri. And already he had bought Kakuri. He had used it and the pain is not going. At that point, what is he supposed to tell Pastor Park? Pastor, I have already used it and the pain is not going. Did he say so? No. What did he say? Yes, Pastor. Why? He trusts who? Pastor Park. This is the servant of God. Even though I bought it before and I used it and the pain is not going, 
But because he has said, let me do it again. Then he, he was not to, to go and buy the kakuri because already he had the kakuri inside his house. Mm -hmm. So he just went and used what? The kakuri. What happened? Miracle happened. As he used the kakuri according to the words of Pastor Pa, uh, his discs, which are dislocated, they got back into their position and the pain disappeared. And he never went for what? For operation. Today, there are brothers and sisters who are sick. They have a, a, a backbone problem. They come to him. We want to use your kakuri. What is he telling them? It is not, the kakuri, it is not that kakuri healed me. What healed me? I had a trust to who? To Pastor Park as the servant of God. As the servant of God. So what am I saying? If we do not have the trust with them who are guiding us, we will not receive that which they are telling us. We will not accept. However, even though they are speaking with the perspective of the word of God, but having the heart to distrust them from the beginning will not give us an opportunity to accept the words which they are speaking unto and to us. Then in so doing, we will not be able to live in the way or in the manner that we are supposed to live. Then we will testify like what? This life is difficult. I can't live this life like this anymore. Right? So, one thing, if at all we have to live nini, spiritual life, nini, one thing if at all one has to receive salvation, if he meets with the preacher who has been sent, he has first of all to trust that what? To trust that preacher. Then he can receive all the contents of that, that preacher is speaking. Right? Yeah. The scripture says, whoever meets a prophet he will receive the prophet's reward. And whoever meets a righteous man will receive a righteous man Right. Reward. Yeah. If you meet with the prophet and you distrust the prophet, how can you receive the word of the prophet? If you meet the righteous man and you distrust the, the words of the righteous man, how can you receive the righteous man's reward? No way. First thing, we have to trust. How did we receive salvation? We had we heard about this uh, the, our salvation from the church. We trusted it. We received it. Yes. We trusted the church. We trusted the, the servants of God. At, at Akama, even if you are not preached by, preached by the pastor, that brother or sister who preached it to you, where did they receive this message from? Yeah? From the church, right? So in the other words, simply we trusted what? The church. Then after we trusted the church in relation to our salvation, why is it becoming difficult that now we cannot trust the church now in matters of spiritual work? In matters of spiritual work. Why then do we now come to see our church is misguiding us? That's why Paul is asking the Galatians in the in Galatians chapter 2. Oh foolish what? Galatians. One thing I want to know from you. Did you receive it by faith or by the deeds of the by or, or by the deeds of what? The law. Right? We, why did we start to follow church? When we listened to the gospel, we were going to other churches before. But when we listened to the gospel and made the comparison, we saw there's a difference here. Then we were drawn by that. The different thing that we discovered. Yes. But as we live our life now inside the church, now we want now the church now to be like what? Where we came from before. Why then don't we want the church to be to be preaching the same about salvation the same way when where we were be where we were before? Can you understand me? Mm -hmm. Then if you want the church now to look like others, then let the church also look like others in matters also what? Salve? Salvation. Right? Let the church be same. With the others in matters also what? Salvation. When we if we if we would have distrusted the church from the beginning, then we would not have received what? Today we would not be testifying, I am just, I am righteous, I am perfect, I am happy. Today, when we come to distrust the church again, the church is guiding us with the words. Leo, uh, when you read about the church, 
unless this is not applicable now in the church where we are in, in the book of Timothy, the Bible says like this about the church. Where are you, Timothy? Timothy disappeared. This is how Paul is describing the church to, to Timothy. Just disappeared. Forgotten. Let me search that one. Just a minute. First Timothy chapter three, verses fifteen. Paul writes to Timothy, telling him what now. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of what? The truth. Paul refers the church as the? First Timothy chapter 3, verses 15. Paul, in First Timothy chapter 3, verses 15, Paul refers to the church as the uh, house of the living God, right? The pillar and the ground of the, the truth. Right? The pillar and the ground of the, the truth. Now you distrust it. Unless now our church is, is not speaking the truth. Sundio? Emmanuel? Yes. Unless now this church is not the pillar and the ground of what? The truth, the truth right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you if we distrust it, where else will we be able to get there? That is the truth, isn't it? You will know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. We were bound in sin, and we met with the church that spoke the truth to us, and we became free from what? Free from sin. Was it realistic to us that I am not, I am now a righteous person? Did, was it realistic to us? Was it making any sense? No. The same same way today when the church is speaking the word of God now in directing our lives, it does not appear to be realistic. It does not appear to be uh, something that makes a sense to sense to us. And because of that, what do we do? We cast doubt now in the, in the church. Then the church will not be able to guide us in the true way of life. We will not be able to go in the true direction of, of life. And when now we mess with our life, along the way, what we say, it is difficult. When it is not working well, when it is not working in our favor, that is when we cry, it is, it is difficult, it is burdensome, it is not joyful. But why is it difficult? Why is it burdensome? Why is it not uh, joyful? We are not doing it in a proper way. The first way for us to do it properly, Ninini, we have to trust them who are speaking to us. Sindhya, I do not understand. I don't understand it. But let me try. Let me trust. Right? I don't understand. Like, let me trust. How then does this trust come? How then does this trust come? In Luke chapter 10, where we were looking in the morning, this guy was coming from Jerusalem going to Jericho. I'm not sure. And let us say maybe this guy was what? A Jew. Hmm. Huh? And he was helped by who? Samaritan. Samaritan, Samaritan is the mix, mixture of the Gentile and, and the Jew. Hmm. Then into a pure Jew, this guy, Samaritan, is unclean. Then this Samaritan wants to help this Jew when this Jew is in his right conscience. Consciousness. Could this Jew accept the help of the Samaritan? 
when this Jew is in a, a state where he can he help himself, could this Jew receive the help of the Samaritan? But at the point when he is not in a, a stable condition to help himself, then the Samaritan does everything for, for him. He relies on what the Samaritan does. When he's not, when he's unconscious, he can rely on what the, the Samaritan, the Samaritan does. Sendio. At that position when we are unconscious, at that position when we are helpless, right? We can trust. At that position when we, we are whole, hopeless, we can trust. I see others are from, finished. Yeah. Mm. We break. We break. Mm. So let us think of Abraham. In the heart of Abraham, in Genesis chapter 15, God comes and speaks to Abraham. I'll be a great shield. Eh? I'll be a great shield and I'll be I'll be a reward. Eh? Exceedingly great reward. I'll be a shield and exceedingly great reward. Abraham responded saying what? What will you give to me seeing that I don't have what? I don't have a child. Even if you give me those things, who will be the heir of those things? This Eliaza, a stranger, the person who is supposed to be my heir is a person who comes from my law, my loins. But I don't have a heir. Then it is meaningless for you even to do what? To give me those things. Was he hopeful that time? Hopeless. Then God took him out and told him, as these stars are, this is how you are. No, no, no. Is it that time? I mean, in chapter 17 is when they are is taken out and shown the stars. In that chapter, God tells Abraham, no, Eliezer will not be your hair. Your hair will be the one who comes from your law, Sorry. from your loins. The word says in that chapter 15, Abraham believed. And it was counted for him for what? Righteousness. For righteousness. Then when you come to Romans chapter 4 verses 18, it goes further to explain. Abraham who was against, against hope, right? Abraham who was against hope, believed in hope. What was the hope? You will be a father of many nations. Is he supporting that? The body of Abraham, the body of Sarah, is he supporting that one? No. It is contrary. How can I be a father of many nations? My wife being what? Barren. How can I be a father of many nations? I myself being an old guy. Which pleasure? Sarah was asking, which pleasure can I have with my Lord? Right? In this, in this situation, how can we be father of, how can I be a father of many nations? But what does the scripture say? He believed that. Why did he believe? Because even in him, when God was saying, I will be exceeding great reward and I will be a shield, Abraham was complaining because he had no son, right? Mm -hmm. So the desire of Abraham was to have what? A son. But when he looks within himself, there is no possibility that he will have what? A son. He has a desire, but within him, there is no way to accomplish this desire. Right? He has a desire, but in him, there is no way that he can accomplish this desire. And what God now comes to speak to him, God speaks what? Actually, God is speaking to him that which he, desire, he desires. You will have what? You will become a father of many yes. nations. Yes. This is what I, I have been yearning for. But I couldn't see it coming by, my, by myself. By myself. I don't know how you will make it, God. But let me just, let me just believe. Even if he just believed reluctantly, just reluctantly. Yes, I tried it by my own. I, I tried it by my own. I don't see the way it is coming. But now you are speaking what I wanted. Let me try your way. Let me try your way. Why is Abraham trying the way of the Lord? He sees in his own way it is impo 
Impossible. Now he lives just let me just try. Even in that trial, just try or let me just try your way. Did God work or not? What would work to give him? Peter, Peter, when he met Jesus for the first time in Luke chapter 5, he had a toil all night long. Then again, Jesus comes to him and tells him, Draw your net into the deep waters. Peter speaks to Jesus, saying, What? I toiled all night long, but I myself, I don't want to go back to the waters, but by your word, let me just go back reluctantly. Whether reluctantly or he, he meant it, when he went back to the waters, what happened? He caught many fish that he has never caught. Right? When did they accept the way, the, other, the, the opposite way? When they see, for sure, my way cannot, cannot work. Then they can trust the way that they are, give, they are given. Yeah. So in our hearts, if one, what has to come into our hearts? We have to admit the position, our position, as we were speaking in the morning. We have to admit our position. I am what? I'm a fair. I'm a fair. I have tried with my life. How many church? How many years in the church, Emmanuel? Outside the church? Outside. So you have 20 years now? You came to church at what age? Around 20. For 20 years, what had you uh, what had you done to develop yourself? Uh, nothing, because I was student. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. It is not nothing. <laughs> you are going to school purposely to do what? Uh, to succeed. To succeed, <laughs> to develop yourself. But after finishing that school, were you successful? Had you developed? Now, certain deceives us. I think my life went bad this time when I was where? In church. Why didn't you make it in, in within the 20 years? <laughs> then you wouldn't have come here. True or false? Mm -hmm. Then you wouldn't have come here. Jeff, mm -hmm. how many years were you having Wakatu <laughs> Nakuja? 22. Now how many? Eight. Eight years. But now with the failures of your life, you blame where? Within the, the eight years. Hey, how can eight years in any crumble your life and the 22 years could not stabilize your life? Right? I also receive thoughts sometimes. I'm deceived. Uh, if you would not have joined the church, then you could be living better. Mm -hmm. uh, living in a church that's what's making you to live miserable. Mm -hmm. And why didn't I live better before? Mm -hmm. Why? So I blame now who? I blame the church, right? I blame the church. I give excuses. But the truth of the matter, even if I was given the all years that I've lived in the church, then I combine with the years that I did not live in the church, maybe my life will be even worse. Right? My life could be even worse. But I thank God, in the church, we receive a sound mind, a sober mind. When we listen to the words of God and accept the word of God to guide our hearts, we receive a sound mind to lead us, to give us a sound what? A sound life. Right? So sometimes I sit and I think, uh, my house where I stay, I pay for 10,000 Kenya shillings. Then I have to pay rent, electricity separate, electricity bill separate, water bill separate. Then I also have to pay the where we have our church now, separate. 
So to pay only the rental bills, I need like 30,000 every month, right? And I also need to eat. I need to travel. I need to educate my children. I need to clothe myself, my children, my wife. And I need to support sometimes my what? My relatives who call, who call. They, they hear, he has a big charge, then they call. <laughs> and I have to support him, right? Then sometimes I do support. Sometimes I do support. And I see... I manage to pay the rent of my house. Then I think, if I was working outside and I earn 50,000 Kenya shillings, mm. could I manage all this? Could I pay, could I live in a, a house of 14,000? And still my 50,000 be sufficient? And after all, I don't have any skin. Mm. Who could employ me in paying me 50,000? 50, 50,000 Kenya shillings, not Uganda shillings. Who could employ me without a skill and pay me this money? No. But here I, I have no skill. I only live with the, by opening the Bible and speaking. I'm living, I'm able to, to, to pay uh, that uh, to live in a house of that amount of money. Right? Truly really speaking, if we need reasons to complain, they are there. And if we need reasons to be thankful about that also, yeah. right? Where do we open our eyes to? If our eyes are open to look for the reasons to complain, you will not miss. There are many. And if our eyes are open to see the things that God is doing for us, they are also there. There is no single day that God has stopped working for it is only that our hearts are blinded to see that God is working for me. God works for us. And at what point does God work for us? In that position, I can't do anything. Then when our hearts are in a position I can do something, God works to bring our hearts also to that position I can do nothing. Thank you. And after our hearts has come to the position I can do nothing, again God works that which we couldn't do. Now He He does. You know, that is the time when we say God is at it, at work. Like in, but when we are being when He's working to bring our hearts where? Down, we don't see God at, at work. But God is ever at, at work. Who Allowed this guy beaten by robbers to be beaten by robbers. God. It, now Jesus is guiding the lawyer, his heart to go to the position of a person beaten by, by robbers. For now Jesus, to enable this person have eternal, eternal life. But because this person by himself, he cannot come to a position where he can he can receive eternal, he, he can receive eternal life. He has to be brought to that position, then given eternal, eternal life. In Leviticus chapter 4, verses 27, 28, who brings the sin of I? Sin. If you have not acknowledged your sin, you cannot bring the sin. He who has acknowledged his sin is the person allowed to bring sin. Right? And how do we acknowledge? acknowledge uh, uh, how can one come to acknowledge his sin? His or her sin? Yeah? After breaking the law. Who put the law in place? God. To make you what? A sinner. <clears throat> to make you admit you are what? A sinner. So that now you can bring what? Sinner. Sin offering. So becoming a sinner, it is God who is working to make you what? Sin. And becoming righteous, it is God who is making you to become righteous. <clears throat> but when you become a sinner, whom do you blame? <laughs> Satan is making me to become a sinner. Then when you are righteous, oh, God is working to make me righteous. 
But who works to make us sinners? Who works to make us righteous? God. After he has made us sinners, makes us also to become righteous. After he has made us to become people who can do nothing, he makes us also to be people who can do something. Through who? Through Jesus Christ. Then to them who know the heart of God, when things are not working in our favor, that is my heart is being done what? Brought the position where I can accept Jesus to work for, for me. And if I know that, when my heart is being lowered down, 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 do I have to, to cry? No. I need to be happy. Because now Jesus is knocking now to, to manifest himself in whom? To manifest himself in me. That is why Apostle Paul is, is, a, is a, he glorifies himself where? In his infirmities, in his weaknesses. Because the glory of God is manifest, manifested. Everyone God wants to work for us. Jesus wants to work for us. Jesus is the justifier. And if he justifies us, who will be against? Against us. It is only that, that we don't want God to work for, for us. Then we fight. We give excuse. If God makes us naked, let us be naked for him to clothe us. If God makes us weak, let us be weak for his strength to be manifested through, through us. If God makes us poor, let us be poor for his riches to be manifested through, through us. Yes. We cannot be able to live a, uh, live a uh, spiritual life if first we have a doubting heart towards the church and towards the servants of all. God. Whichever word they speak to us will not make sense to us because already the doubting heart is there. Is there. And for us to trust, then we have to see, we have to be in a position that I am I cannot do it. I am wrong. I am wrong. Then I can trust the other body. Then they can lead our life. And we can say spiritual life is. We can enjoy spiritual life and see God is working. Hey, now God is working. Right? My heart was very much down this. After we finished the retreat, then the first Sunday after the retreat, uh, it was raining in my in our place. That Sunday, many people did not turn up for the, our Sunday service. We only had like 30 people coming. And many seats were empty. That time, my heart was so disappointed. Our brothers, they are, they are not interested in what? With the word. Eh? Then, uh, that was on Sunday. On Tuesday, I went out with my wife. And as we were walking, we did not have even uh, money to even to board a motorbike. Then we were just walking, going where we were going. Then we were discussing. I told my wife, I think I am the problem. When I look onto our church, our church is a good church. How? In the month of March, we were given a lot, lots of burdens. But we managed all those burdens. First, we were to organize a conference. And the missionary was sent to preach in that conference. In that conference, uh, we were not to do it in our church premises. We were told to do it in a good place. And doing it in a good place, our budget was running up to 64000 We managed to do it. After one week, we are told we are sending a missionary to stay with you for three weeks. For, they said for a month to stay in your region. How then we, how will we host this missionary now, Pastor Hakia? Mm -hmm. But three weeks passed by, we managed that. And uh, when he was going back, he was so much happy. And I think that is the reason also he said we come to Uganda. I threw her, that's why we came to Uganda. Mm -hmm. He was so happy. Then even that one, we managed. Mm -hmm. So looking just at how he stayed with us, we spent a lot of money again, making meeting here. Traveling with him from one place to another, we spent again a lot of money. Then that very month, we paid our rents. That very month, we went for the retreat. And every brother and sister, they did registration. 
Then they also paid for the transportation fee to and fro. How then can I say that this church is poor? Mm -hmm. yeah. If they can manage this, then this is not a poor, poor church. I think I am the problem. And I was speaking to my wife, I think I am the problem. Our church, it just needs a pastor who can bring brothers together, together then they can do greater works. I, for my case, I think I have failed in bringing brothers together. together. That's why sometimes, again, it becomes difficult for us to do, uh, to do even a simple thing. Sometimes we just need 2,000, but gathering that 2,000, it becomes a problem. And how comes now we have done this, we have handled things of almost 100,000, more than 100,000, and then sometimes the gathering 2,000 becomes a problem. I think I am the one who do not have the skills to manage people well like this. And thankful that week, Pastor Johan was speaking to us using this book of Luke chapter, chapter 10. I could also clearly see my, myself. Ah, God, he wants to work. Yes, God, he wants to work for me. But before God works for me, that which I know that God is working for me, that it's good things are happening, he has to take me out of the land, the land. He wants to put the words in me, I cannot, I cannot. And I, I was speaking this word. So on Sunday, this Sunday, today is Tuesday, yes. yesterday but one. Hmm. Did they come 30? Again, all seats were filled. Where did they come from? <laughs> Where were you last Sunday? <laughs> so, God wants to work for us. But before God works, we have to be in a position, I cannot, I cannot do it. Then God does it for me. When I cannot do it, I can trust you to do it for me. When Abraham could not, uh, could not have a son by his own, he could trust God to have son through what God has said. When Peter could not fish, he could trust the words of Jesus for him to be able to catch the fish that he never caught in all his profession of doing what? Of fishing. Are we together? Yes. God wants to work for us. And God is working for us to humble our hearts, to be in a position where he alone remains to be the one working in, in us. Right? Yes. And when now God is working, when the Samaritan man worked in Luke chapter 10, is there anything that the, the man beaten by, Roma, uh, by robbers did? Nothing. 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 Everything was done by the, Samar the Samaritan. And if everything is done for us, is it difficult or it is easy? It is easy. It is so easy. Send you. So, I can testify up to that point, unless we haven't spent our time. But if we haven't spent all our time, the remaining minutes we can also share. We can react. Senior Jeff? Yes. Mm. Time is over, or we have some minutes to react. <laughs> okay, then we can conclude here. Yes. So, I don't know. Or tomorrow we will be meeting. Tomorrow we have a workshop. Yes. Yeah, we have a workshop. Mm. At the Church, yeah? Church. And uh, I think it's going to be right Yes. Fellowship of married brothers and sisters. Or to, we do fellowship in any workshop together with them, with the yeah, brothers and sisters. After workshop, then you come. Mm. Tomorrow is Wednesday. Yes. Mm. Okay, then. Then we will be sharing our hearts continuously, even in the workshop, when we have time to testify. Mm. Mm. But one thing we have to believe. God want, God is working for us. God wants to work for us. I'll read one scripture, then I will pray, we'll finish. 
Romans chapter 8, verses 30. I like verses 30, that we're on free time. As of Romans 28, you can be reading read up to verses 30. All right. Mm -hmm. 30, 30 says, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Mm -hmm. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also mm -hmm. glorified. Them whom he predestinated. It is, they were chosen before the foundation of the world. As we read in Exodus 15, 13, he say, it says, he guides the people whom he did what? He redeemed eh? to his holy habit, eh? habitation. Then here, the people whom he had predestinated, he called. And calling them, he knows while they are sinners, they cannot have the confidence to come to, to me. Then what did he do? Yes. He justified them to give them the confidence to, to come. Right? Mm -hmm. Then for them to dwell where he has called them in, what did he do to them? He glorifies them. And if he leaves them without glorifying them, every time they see that they are humble, they are humble, 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 they will do what? They will run away. They will run away. Then he glorifies them. Are you justified? Jeff, yes. are you justified? Are you just? Then if you are justified, you are called. You are predestinated. Then you are also glorified. Then we are big people. Amen. We are not small people. Amen. Yes. Then we are big people. We are not small, small people. In his eyes, we are big people. We are glorified people. But we see ourselves to be small, small people. Hey, see yourself as a small person, Kama, if you are unjust. But if you are justified, then he glorifies you. Then you are a glorious guy. Amen. Yes. Let us pray. Pastor Prince is praying. Yeah, let's, let's pray. Father, we thank you for giving us a graceful fellowship in your word, together with your servant. Uh, for sure, we are people who do not know <coughs> your heart clearly, though we receive salvation. However, we do not uh, live with your heart all the time. That's why. Uh, continually to become victim of the tricks and also the lies of Satan. But also Satan deceive our heart though we do not know. Though we are the one who should learn, but Satan make us feel that we are okay. And through this time we could see clearly how we are working in our spiritual life and also through us. The same way you work for Abraham, the same way you work for Peter, when they could reach this point where they cannot do anything, that is when God could work after they handed over to, to him. And so Abraham is the one who truly wanted the child. And then, so he has this desire, but he cannot believe the word of God, which says he will have this child. Because he thought he's the one who should have this child. Even though God is continuously giving the hope. Father, as he could realize this, the heart of God, and could see he's the one who has failed, then for sure you know, he could also see this work of God. May you guide our heart to this position. This man was beaten by robbers. Because until now, you have been working from that position. May you continually guide our heart. And uh, as you have given us this promise in Romans chapter 8, verse 30, uh, you predestinated us 
called us and also have justified and glorified us. We have been living with the heart of despising this calling that you gave us. And also we look at ourselves. For sure, we are glorified people because we justified people. For sure, we are holy people because we are justified. And uh, in this heart, we are able to stand before anyone and also we are able to uh, preach this gospel for you. And so you have glorified us for sure. Meaning you have given us everything even to preach this gospel power. And so we live are more than willing to work for our lives to work through us and also to to to, to use us to establish and uh, grow our church in Uganda. We thank you for this time. We will continually build our hearts in the past fellowship. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Pastor. Um, I end this. Yes. I leave. No one joined <laughs> except Derek.